Uh, so my name is Aaron Kroon. Uh, I work at Empare, and I want to talk about uh, our transition from uh, moving our uh, main code base from Ruby on Rails to uh, Clojure. Uh, to do that, I have to start at sort of the beginning, as uh, one and a half year ago. So uh, Empower is a part of uh, uh, Aliander, and they're a Dutch uh, system operator, DSO, and so the, basically they uh, um, handle the electrical cables and the gas pipes in the, in the, in the ground. So, and in the future, it's sort of the thing that people will need more and more electricity. So there's something going on like, uh, called the ener energy transition. And Empower uh, started with an uh, innovation. And this is our office, Arnhem, uh, uh, with a team uh, uh, having uh, one uh, employee with a computer science uh, background. and. Uh, three people with uh, electric, electrical engineering uh, background. And what we actually made was um, a hardware device. And now I have to, okay, sorry. I'm going to make this a little bit more fluent. So I started nervous, but now I'm done with that. So, um, uh, yeah, uh, let's talk. Um, so what we do is, uh, what we did at that point, one and a half year ago, was we made a hardware device. And, okay, now this thing is not working, it's very cool. This is a day of... Okay, it turns this way. Okay, cool. Um, so we started with a hardware device. So what it does, uh, you put it in your electric cupboard and it measures uh, your, your data uses, your electricity uh, usage, and then it stores that. And uh, what you can do with it is you can use it to power apps. So this is like one sample app of us, and the only thing you can do with it is real-time energy uses in your house. So the system measures every one second, and well, then you can do an innovative uh, stuff with it. Um, so when I joined, Empower was mainly a spec writing company. So the hardware was not insourced, the applications were not made by themselves, so the only thing what was happening was uh, writing specs, and giving to some other company. And that way, trying to innovate and doing something. So one big plus of having an internal marketing company is that we have minions, lots of them. And we call them Larry. So, and well, they help a lot. But we, rubber duck programming is real, but we do it with Larry, so that's helpful. Um, so, but to get the data from the device, to, to apps, you actually have to have something because, well, uh, most homes are firewalled with just routers from, from uh, internet providers, so you need something else. So now it's branded Hello Data, but when I started, it was called something else, and it was also spec'd, so it, it was not written by yourself, so it was just... Uh, how the government does it, you write a spec, then you ask a couple of companies, and well, cheapest wins. So we ended up with uh, a Ruby on Rails. That's why, that's why. <laughs> Is it? Yeah, okay, cool. Um, so, okay, so, so I ended up with the uh, um, Ruby on Rails application. So uh, this picture sort of uh, is how we see our future. So uh, three months in, we have a sort of dream session uh, with the complete company, and we're sort of deciding that we're not focusing on one hardware device anymore, but we want to focus on making it possible for uh, other uh, parties on a platform to focus on different parts of the, of, of like a multi-sided platform, you see this Android. So you want to focus on making Internet of Things hardware, you want to make it focus on making uh, in, in innovative apps on phones or just value added services. So um, 
well, we try, we try to um, get it into the in, in in the minds of all our involved parties, but it's it's really hard because um, they don't sh share your mindset. They they really don't. Uh, they just say, say, oh, we're just going to make this one user story, and they don't think about okay, here I'm going to spend a little bit more time because it will help us in the future. So they're just doing what what you tell them to do. So. Yeah, it's really not working, and it was really just like a struggle. You you think you 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 have something, and no no, you have to just start from the beginning and try to make people uh, understand what you really want to uh, want to do. Um. Okay, so this is our uh, Kibana uh, one hour uh, traffic. So the left. Uh, or I can, I guess, yeah, this left side, this is uh, our request for every uh, five minutes or one minute or something, and, well, not very interesting, and this is our load for 24 hours, so, it just, it just internet things. We have devices, and they connect with HTTPS to the Ruby on Rails app, and they just be there every 10 seconds, hey, hey, and, this is not really something you can do with Ruby on Rails. It's like a snowball effect. You have, uh, um, when I started there, there was like 166 uh, milliseconds to handle one request, and if it will slow down, then the Nginx queue would fill up, and then everything would just uh, fell, fell down. And now we are at the point that we only have one, like 100 milliseconds. And you can say we can scale it by having more processes for Ruby on Rails, but it's, it's, it's just single threaded and it's, or it's gonna be completely expensive or it's just crashing all the time. But, well, AWS auto scaling groups, they fix it quite nicely. Something crashes, AWS says, okay, cool, new machine. and the, so th that ran for more than a year, and well, cool. Um, but to sum, uh, to sum it up, well, Rails is not for IoT, and frankly, the code base, uh, and MVC, and, and using an ORM, ORM uh, it's just, yeah, it's really, well, it makes me sad. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. And it's, uh, so uh, when I started at Empire, I was sort of suffering from a sort of like programmer burnout, I guess. I, I'm not, 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 more like a bullshit, uh, uh, yeah, burnout. You, you have to do all sort of things as a programmer just to, just because. And it's so weird. And at my previous job, I started using Clojure. I just introduced it there because I thought, well, that solves our problems way faster, and it did. But I got tired from the business there, and it was just a really small startup. And the thing you have to all, you have always have to struggle for money in startups. And so I like to be uh, inno innovative, or innovative, whatever. And so, but I don't like working 60 hour a week for low pay. So then Empire came around, and it's Ali Elner, and it's a real company, and they try to solve this cool problem. And now they solve it with reels. Okay, so I think closure. We need this. <laughs> now you only have to convince the people to 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 use closure. So, okay. Um, well, we. I guess everybody knows here there are some benefits to uh, to closure. Um, so I, I talked about it with a colleague of mine for for a short time. Not really a programmer, but we can sort so. For, sort of analyze it and say that the Lisp is like a good thing because you have macros and you don't have to write your own DSL. And we try to make a future where we want to communicate with all sorts of hardware, all sorts of types of hardware, and we want to sort of make a generic uh, data model and want to make sure that we can make some generic attraction. So closure would be really nice. Uh, it's functional, that's cool, because we're doing stuff in the cloud and immutable stuff tend to make stuff easier when you have multiple machines doing all sort of stuff and multiple cores and so on, so that's cool. Um, one thing also is that the community really stands out with interesting practical 
concept, not the Scala way of interesting concept. Right? You read something and I feel dumb, uh, dumb. And I, I don't think I'm dumb, but I'm sort of Scala dumb, I guess. So, and then you have to promote that to some someone else. So you have to you go to your manager and say, we're gonna write Scala. Really? Mm. No. Uh, so, but it's, and I really like, if you want to sell closure, sell it as an ambition filter. Because if people want to write closure, and they ask you, but why don't we write Java? Or, well, we can still write Java if we, if we want to, but we can also write closure. And probably they're sort of interested in, in, in new concepts and, and being ahead of the field and want to have people being ahead of the field. So that's, that's, that's really cool. Um, okay, now we have Twitch. This is me on a, on a handball field. Um, so the thing is, um, in sports, if you uh, are really good at something, um, it's still important that if you play in a team, that you're also um, good at the basics. So um, if you're really good at shooting, but you cannot pass, and you always let go of the ball, you're not very really useful in a team. So um, um, I would say, if you're looking for new people, high skills you lack, but do not keep anyone away from your main focus. So because our first hire, we, we made the shift, we're going to go for closure. And the first hire was someone who was really uh, good in uh, uh, documentation, really uh, uh, experienced in our field, but not knowledgeable in closure and not knowledgeable in reals. No, that's, that's, that's not the problem. This, the, the problem is that I personally kept him away from the sad, pa uh, sad uh, part of a work, Na mainly the, the real code base. So now we have someone who's trying to learn closure, is really good at, com uh, at something else, uh, interesting, interested in being ahead of the field, who want to learn stuff, and he doesn't know, he doesn't share your pain, so he cannot help you with, with solving new stuff. So this is, well, Something just to take away. I, did, I really had, had to come up with like a bad decision um, uh, the last one and a half year, and it was not using closure, but it was sort of keeping people away from the stuff you also need to be uh, need to know to become a useful uh, part in the team. Um, so now I have to sort of switch to the how do you learn closure if you have a uh, a team of people that actually don't program for a living, or start to program for, for, for a living. Um, so one thing we tried to do was to um, use ASCII Doctor and write a, a plugin, and uh, it's like Perun, that's uh, like a static site generator, and it's in Markdown, and we tried to um, um, uh, yeah, use uh, so, uh, something else we, uh, I mean, with Ask a Doctor, so we try to integrate it, and we actually use it. I don't think it's it's merged yet, but have to. No, it's a sort of merge. Okay, but we, we generate our documentation with it. So that was like the first um, search uh, practice uh, project for, uh, for someone. Um, other thing we try to do is we, we sort of have to uh, ra uh, read books and well, everybody is using a different editor. That's, I don't, it's so weird. And that's actually a, a big pain point uh, in the closure world. It's hard to just, where do you start? You have to learn closure, but then you have to learn the JVM. And then you have to learn Emacs first because otherwise you cannot edit anyways. So um, where, do, where, do we, where do we start? So. Um, I don't think we we solved it. The only thing is that everyone is different and you have to sort of ens ensure that people can put in the learning effort and you give them time and uh, and yeah, that, that's the only thing. But I, I would say go with cursive. That's really, really nice. Uh, yeah, yeah, so. Um, so um, 
now we go uh, back like uh, June uh, last year, and well, we're getting the hang of it. We're releasing every uh, two weeks. Um, oh, that's quite nice for for this starting a software company, I guess. And then we decide, well, we're gonna do a proof of concept, and we're gonna uh, see how we can use closure and all sort of stuff to to uh, rewrite our system. The rewrite, and yeah, this is not that. That wasn't okay because uh, what, the thing is, we had to still learn closure, and now we're going to start uh, um, rewrite, and it's it's just it's just bad because um, everybody was waiting. Um, we we missed a lot of knowledge, uh, skill, everything, experience. So everybody is is learning, and what we should focus we uh, we be focused on is team, not. Okay, maybe, uh, and not rewriting. So uh, it's so you can see it here. Um, we start with the rewrite in sort of July, and we did not produce any code at all. And then the sort of peak is the next part. So for that, for the next part, I, still, I first have to do this: get the lightning talk uh, about uh, Containium, and it was really a force multiplier for us. Uh, we had Danny, Danny Wilson, and he. For us, and he really he came with the idea, idea from okay, let's make start at the beginning. So, but the first it was okay. How do I run your application? Don't know. Nobody runs it fully. You, you just use Jenkins, and sometimes the build runs, and sometimes it doesn't. And okay, but it's, it's real. You have so many dependencies. We had to run all the tests. We needed. Um, what do you mean? Elasticsearch, Fluentd, uh, Sidekick. I'll, okay, I don't know if anyone used Rails, but it's like um, I need something. Gem install, uh, everything. It's just if you can Google it, then you can uh, then you can use it. And otherwise, it's <laughs> so. What he did was, I'm gonna pack all the dependencies and use the Nix package manager. And Nix is, by the way, it's like a functional package manager. It's just like Homebrew or AppGet. Uh, but uh, it is completely deterministic, and it has its flaws, but well, it also has its benefits. And one of the benefits was is that everybody, everybody at our company now has a functioning setup and can run all the tests in mostly within a day. If it's a bad day, it's, it's the end of the day. Otherwise, it's like in the, uh, one hour or something. So that's really cool to have. And one of the cool parts is that uh, if you use Ruby, then you probably use uh, RVM. And um, you need C Ruby and to J Ruby. So uh, now you don't have to open multiple shells. And so that's really cool. Um, it's a, another way. Um, if you're doing New really easy to just always be negative. This doesn't work. Why don't you do something like? It's always focused on something that's not working and never on the good parts of the technology. Maybe we can just fix it a little bit. But I would just say, if you have something, a, a, a technology, focus on, on on its potential and not on the limitations because. That's just putting a lot of negativity in, in, in the air, and that's just not, not, not cool. Um, so we stopped with the, with the rewrite because things were not moving, and it were hard. So um, then we started with uh, well, ring rack. Original name was train rack because we were sort of afraid that, it, that we wouldn't, would not pull it off. So what we did was um, was this. Uh, let's whatever. So, um, what we did was uh, we uh, we also used uh, a Twikov. Uh, it's a closure Ruby interrupt thing. And what we uh, our, our our complete plan was uh, we we're first going to move our real code base 
to JRuby. And we're going to do it by writing a uh, ring, rec handler. So rec is the, um, uh, I'm not sure what it is, because when we started it, this project, I sort of knew rules, but not really. And I guess also, he, lear he learned on the job, so cool, cool. Um, and we went uh, to back and thought, okay, we can make a ring handler that can talk to Rack, and then we can just run the Rails app in ring, and then we can sort of, this is annoying. Okay. Um, then we can uh, start at the API and rewrite that. And maybe the API was not the best part to, to, to start, but it made us reuse the, the specs already in, in Rails. So we don't, didn't have to write new integration tests. So we sort of knew if stuff was still working. And the other thing was if this would fail miserably and people will just write terrible closure. So the only thing what would we have to do was to rewrite the part of the API again. So, and that was maybe uh, just a revert in good. So that was, that's why we started there. So, um, well, currently we are in, uh, in production. Oh, this is great. Okay. This is how we work and well, cool. Um, yeah, okay, the thing with Ring is, is that it's, but that's sort of already solved um, in the previous uh, presentation because uh, Pedestal is way better. I know, I, I used it in, in, in my previous uh, job, uh, but um, if you use it with Rails, then you get all sort of, uh, let's see, can I? Yeah, um, so you have to, start at the API route, and then you sort of have to make sure that you always close your active record uh, uh, connection, because that's the database connection, and if you don't close them, then your application will just deadlock in, in uh, within a second, if we're in production, at, uh, in our case. Then you always have to, you always work with a stream uh, in, in Ring, and then you have to have this wrap with restored body, you have to do that a lot. So you have to store the incoming uh, input stream. You have to put it back when another uh, middleware is, is doing stuff. Otherwise, they will just have an empty input stream. And that's, that's really annoying. Um, then you have to um, have a lot of this weird middleware stuff because Rails is, uh, Rails is a platform. So if you're going to replace it by with a programming language, you, well, there's a mismatch, so, so you have to do a lot of uh, stuff yourself. Um, yeah. We solved the pedestal problem in, in, in Ring by um, ma uh, first marking if something, if another middleware have to, has to do something, and then what well, we, we have to do here, and the mark response body would just say, okay, you have to do something in another middleware which would, would, would fix that. So, um, yeah, this is another problem with ring stuff is that, so this is the other slide, skipped a lot, and then you have one function, and that's, uh, this is the Rails part, and above it was the closure part. So now you have to sort of do uh, funky stuff that you sort of filter every um, uh, every function. Uh, in every middleware, you have to, to to filter on the if it's a which route it is, and so on and so on. So, but okay, this is not really interesting for the rest because you should really shoot something like this because then you can just say, okay, I need uh, this. Um, I just need this middleware here, I need this middleware there, and it's just based on the route and you don't have to do fancy stuff by just having multiple routes everywhere and you can just 
you can you can just make it really explicit. So that's uh, that's it. Uh, oh. oh, this is maybe something to if you use Ruby enclosure, then you get really ugly uh, <laughs> ugly stuff. But okay. Um, so this was our projection thing. Um, this was really scary. So the uh, thing was, uh, with the rewrite, um, we stopped with it after li like one and a half month of, of uh, not producing too much, and we skipped it. Uh, and the rewrite to ring rack was actually longer. But we sort of stuck with it. And the reason was because uh, the, that um, when we did the, the rewrite, everybody was just doing stuff alone. And this uh, ring rack thing was more like a team effort. So uh, this was uh, fixable, sort of. But uh, it was still kind of scary because, well, this is all. Uh, the, the commit was really big. And it was just one, yeah, big pal. Yeah, I would. I I don't think I would recommend it. I guess so. Um, this was a cool part. So this is all, uh, another uh, uh, Kibana uh, screenshot, um, and it basically meant that um, we inherited our uh, code base and our setup, and it was. Um, uh, Including log rotate, rock, uh, log rotate, and, and so on. And well, they didn't work. So this was the moment that our data was full be, uh, because out the AWS out didn't help us anymore. So because our JRuby was too stable. But we found out just just in time. So lucky catch there. But uh, to, to, so uh, it, this really meant that uh, our JRuby uh, service keep running for for uh, just. Every, uh, Every, until every release, and not like our serials service, which is crash, I guess, at least one one time a, uh, a day. So that's the improvement. So should you switch? JRuby, yes. If it's doing Rails, uh, switch to JRuby. It makes everything really easy. Um, ring rack, ah, I, yeah. That's Maybe so. I would like to because I, I I really would like to offer people a way out of the real ghetto. I'm not sure if someone had this title for that reels is a ghetto, and but I say MVC and and gems and monkey patching and and having just making it so easy to have one tangled mess of code base, and it's just. It's cool when you have one-off projects, but I guess Rails is, is yeah, closure is the way out. So uh, I, if if you need help with this, please c contact me or, or or someone else of of Empire because we can definitely help you out. But but to say, well, this is a really great open source project and you can just switch. I don't. Think so, but it is battle tested. The ring rack code is running a prediction, and it's it just works. But it it doesn't have the niceties of of reals. It's it's just you have to have a high threshold of pain still. And so I, yeah, so that's why I, I cannot recommend it. It had it doesn't has the have the the closure st stylistic niceties. It, it's you you yeah you have to know both reals. And closure, so that's not for everybody. Um, hindsight, um, oh, really surprised. Um, so what I said, if you hire someone, do not protect them from your code base because it's going to buy really bite you. When you need them to understand your code base, you're going to be annoyed that they don't know your code base. And so just let people learn right away, even if it's not nice. But look, they want they decided to work with you, so they should also be interested in having the pain. And they can always write closure also, but they also need to know your, your current um, This is, I'm not sure, maybe the, the, 
th there is a solution for not knowing uh, what to do when you install stuff and when you use new stuff and so on. And though you have to document everything, but you know how it goes. First people complain to you, this is not documented. Okay, now it's documented. Oh, I didn't read it. Oh, yeah, because Google, you think of a question, you open your browser and the answer is there. So you have to compete with that, uh, and, and it's I, I'm not sure what's the solution for that. Maybe just a solar installation for all the stuff you have in the office or something. But it, I guess it makes everything a little bit nicer if you just sort of make sure that that everything is documented and you can actually find it, especially for beginners, because it's really easy if you're just dream of computers for your whole life, but then you have someone with an different background, electrical engineering, and they, they, they are smart people, you know it. But just knowing everything about computers and so on, that's not, like, that's not a skill, but they can still help you. But then you, st you have to help them by finding out the details and, 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 and not like they see something and they can stare at it for 15 minutes, one hour, and you come over and you say, oh, you just have to whatever, make install something else. But it, it's, yeah, it's so documented. And another thing, just ensure that people can actually put in the learning effort. Um, it's, it's so easy that the, the, uh, the day starts, people say, I'm gonna learn and practice with Clojure today. And then the, the manager, the support manager comes in and says, we have, well, whatever, it's just a random problem. And well, there goes your day of learning and you never get it back. So uh, sort of have to protect uh, people for that. Uh, well, this is, we're hiring, so, yeah, and this is, this is me. Um, yeah, I, I never look at Twitter, I guess, but if you want to, I, I read my email, Keybase is, is, is really cool. Uh, I see that I still have some time because, um, um, What, what, what we try to do at uh, Empower, uh, namely, is, is what the, the previous talk. That's sort of the future we foresee. Not completely with the uh, conversational computing, but w with the uh, owner of the data is, is is end user. And it's not that everything should only function when uh, when it is in, it's in data silos and so on, but you should sort of have a uh, you, have to, you should have the, the choice to, to go away w uh, with the Facebook or something or, uh, and so on. So that's uh, really cool. And sort of uh, something that's also usable now, it's like the Keybase uh, uh, file system offer. I'm in it, so if you want to, if you're also in it, you can send me a message and it's encrypted and it's like magic and it's really cool. It's, it's just uh, available now. So uh, I would, yeah, contact me by Keybase, I would say. That's the nice stuff. Uh, yeah, that's it. Uh, we're at hellodata.org, but I will. Uh, uh, questions? Any questions? Yes. Uh, the mic works. If that's okay. Otherwise, we can show. Hey, uh, so we've done something pretty similar in that we have migrated the Rails app to Clojure, and we kind of did it a different way. Uh, I wasn't in for the JRuby migration, but I have several comments from coworkers that it actually wasn't that easy at all. There are a lot of Ruby gems that are not treat safe. Uh, there are a lot of things that are not actually meant to execute on multiple treats. So I'm wondering, when you went to JRuby, did you actually switch your application server to a JRuby friendly application server, or did you stick with the Unicorn or whatever you were using before? Uh, so we used. Uh, what are you running Ruby in right now? JRuby, does it execute your Clojure server or does it execute a Ruby server as well? Yes, both. Uh, which Ruby server is, does it, it executes? Do you have any idea? Is it uh, Puma? Yeti. Okay. It's a ring handler. So we run, what we did is, uh, okay, we only switched after JRuby 9000 was released because it's very nice with uh, native dependencies. Um, and yes, we also had some issues with um, uh, single threaded and uh, it's uh, no, not working. But that was, well, you see it really fast that something 
working right. So what we have now is we just have a, a Yeti application server, have some actually real uh, run code in it, and the real original code base is just running in the same JVM. And yeah, Nginx before it. That's it. Sorry, can you? So, so, so the way it seems is that you're going to grab the really cold control code, correct? Yes. This is kind of what we did last year. We had Jupyter and we had both of these started in the same place. Did you actually consider another way to do some major tweaks or not? Um, yet of Okay, what do we, okay, so what, do we, what we tried was uh, not migrating at all. Just rewrite everything in Clojure from, this, from scratch and then just migrate away. But that was way too slow. So the new strategy was, okay, um, we want to move to JRuby if we're gonna stick with it because um, it's way faster and we can then actually use Clojure. And that was the sort of an extra nicety. So we were just, and then the a decision to switch, to use closure to call the Ruby first was just uh, pragmatic from um, the, the um, risk mitigation. <laughs> so, Thank you. Yeah. Any other questions? No? Thank you, Owen.